why I woke up to a whole nurse in my room with a little clipboard and you know taking notes. These motherfuckers was taking notes on a bitch. I feel like dying for sure. Luck in the pie for sure. There's no Hey y'all, thank you so much for watching this into the TV where we talk about everything and before I say I mean everything, I mean like we're gonna do something a little different real quick. <laughs> um, happy new year. First of all, this is my first bit. Well, y'all don't have already seen a video this year, but I recorded that video last year and um see what happened was we're gonna get there. That's a whole nother video. Um, because I feel like I'm tired of explaining myself. Like I don't need to explain myself, especially my story time. So if you wanna update on what's going on and like what is about to happen like for real for real you might want to you know after you finish watching this video go ahead and watch this video and then go to my next video because um i should have an update up if i don't have an update right now up probably going to be coming up in the next few days so be on a lookout for that if it's not already out but like i was saying <laughs> um thank you for watching this into league tv where we talk about everything and when i mean everything i mean like part two of the most recent story time i believe i titled that story time my psych forward experience or something like that but if you haven't watched that video i mean for you to just pause this video or like stop it right now none of what i'm getting ready to say is gonna make sense so go ahead and do what you need to do because you need to be all caught up and stuff because like i got a lot more to talk about and yeah and i'm like honestly i'm tired of talking about the same stuff but so much like hasn't gone on to where it's just like bitch how bitch where how are you gonna get these videos out how are you gonna edit these but anyways like i was saying so before we get into this next part of the story time if you haven't done so already don't forget to hit that subscribe button below because y'all my life is crazy it's crazy as hell crazy as fuck like i don't even know what to tell y'all besides the fact that it's just crazy and you need to be here you need to be here to just listen to my crazy ass stories because not only am i gonna have crazy ass stories but i'm gonna be trying to like help y'all and stuff too because i know a lot of y'all been working from home or want to work from home and then a lot of y'all have advice as well to ask me or y'all got questions and stuff that y'all want to ask me as well that I haven't addressed. So we're going to get there, but just follow along, hit the subscribe button because um, I got a lot of information for y'all, okay? Okay, y'all. So at this point in the story time, we're, me and my husband, we're still at the hospital. Um, by this time, my husband's sister went to pick up, um, came to the hospital to pick up my son because at the time he was really young, like three, four months, and he was real fussy. And he was trying to get the fuck about that hospital, which I do not blame him for. So after his sister came pick him up, she had called and was just like, hey, like he's still crying, y'all. We done made it to the house. He's still crying. Um, he doesn't want a bottle because I was exclusively breastfeeding at that time, y'all. So yeah, y'all know how to get this. Well, if y'all don't know how it goes, y'all can imagine how it goes. A baby being used to the titties and you got a whole plastic nipple in your face, like what the fuck is this and so um i was just like babe go ahead and text him go pick him up y'all go to help you some rest obviously y'all know i'm gonna be here for a while and i'm pretty sure you don't have to leave at some point anyway so just go ahead i'll call you i'll keep you updated let you know what goes on and then besides that same morning i had an interview like i told y'all my last story time i had an interview for what i thought at that moment was the best job that i've ever um been given the opportunity to have so i really didn't want to miss the interview because i was already burnt out with the previous job as well and so i was really just trying to get the book so y'all um after my husband leaves i was like let me just try to get some sleep because i don't want to end up sleeping through this interview plus i don't know when these people are going to come get me at this point it's five o'clock in the morning nobody has yet to come get me and my interview was around like 11 i believe so I'm just like, damn, I kind of want them to come give me and get this shit over with, but then I kind of don't because I know once I go, like, I'm not going to be able to do this phone interview. So let me just chill out and stay out of people's way, okay? So eventually, I don't know what time I fell asleep, neither do I know how long I fell asleep, but I eventually woke up and bitch, why I woke up to a whole nurse in my room, like sitting down in my room. She, she had a, a chair in the door and she was facing me with a little clipboard and you know taking notes bitch you, you remember when i told i told y'all the, the last story time i told y'all when i first came into this um facility like i was walking around like about to go to my room and i seen people outside of people's doors and i didn't really know what you know i've never been to any department or unit in the hospital like this before so i didn't really know what was going on but girl let me tell y'all 
these motherfuckers was taking notes on a bitch. Like, taking notes on a bitch, like, I'm sleep. I'm sleep. Like, what are you taking notes on? Like, my sleeping pattern? You know, how many times I move? You know, in my sleep? Like, what the fuck are we really taking notes on? But okay, sis, I'm gonna let you do your job. Because I got a job to do myself. I got an interview that I'm trying to, you know, get. So, yeah, let me just shut the fuck up. So, I got up, just, you know, ignored the lady, didn't say anything, didn't acknowledge her. And, um, the interview that I was getting ready to um, have, it was a phone interview, obviously, but um, they had like different notes and stuff that you could read over to kind of get a feel how they're going to be interviewing you and what questions to expect for them to ask. So I was like going over that and um, just trying to get my mind off of the situation that I was in currently because <sighs> how I was able to focus, I don't know. I don't know, bitch. No, no. Don't really give a fuck. But I did that shit. <laughs> and so I had my phone on ring, like, super, super loud because I did not want to sleep through my alarm or anything like that or sleep through my phone call once the people did call me. So, y'all, I finally got the phone call. And um, I guess the interview lasted maybe about a good 30 minutes or so. I was nervous as fuck because, like, I know everything that's going on around me, but the interviewer obviously don't. So we just like, I gotta pretend like I'm in a normal environment. I gotta pretend like everything is A, the fuck okay when it's, bitch, it ain't. Um, it, it ain't at all. So after the interview was completed, um, I felt a lot better. Like I did, I was like, oh, okay, I finally got this over with. As far as how I felt, I did, um, I felt like I did okay, I guess. I mean, I eventually did end up getting a job. So obviously I did good, bitch. <laughs> But that was over with and about two hours later a nurse came in the room and was like, hey, um, in a little bit some officers are going to come and pick you up and I'm transport you to the mental hospital. Because again, I was in the regular hospital that had a mental unit in there, but they were going to be sending me to an actual mental facility, which was nothing but mental patients that were staying a night, staying nights, weeks, whatever, to be evaluated. And so bitch, after she told me what they was going to do and all of that, she gave me a brown paper bag and like this green paper tissue looking made out of suit to put on and tell me to take all my clothes, uh, put it in that brown paper bag and then put on that green jumpsuit looking thing. Let me tell you, I've never been in jail. I've never been arrested. I've never been even in a police car. But Rich definitely felt like she was being arrested that day because I mean, why are we doing all of this? I'm, I'm not trying to kill myself. I'm not trying to hang myself. Why are we really doing this? Like, I mean, whatever, that's their protocol, whatever. But I really felt like they were doing too much because, I mean, even though a bitch was sad, even though a bitch was depressed, even though a bitch wasn't eating and stuff, you know, whatever. I mean, I don't feel like I needed all of that, you know, but whatever. It, I feel like at the end it did help because now I just like, I know, like, cause I still deal with depression and stuff now, but now it's like, I know like, bitch, don't lose your mind because if you lose your mind, they're gonna send you back to that place. So you might want to either go to the bathroom and fucking kick and scream and cry silently, or you might want to keep your shit together, okay? <laughs> and so that's where I'm at in my life right now. Even though I still deal with it on a daily basis, but whatever, that's a whole other story. So after I like changed my clothes and stuff, I immediately called my husband and I'm, like, I just started breaking down like, oh my God, they're about to take me and finally, it's finally happening. I feel like I'm about to go to jail. Like they got me wearing this fucking green paper suit and got my clothes in this brown paper bag. <laughs> I was just freaking out and he was just like, babe, like it's gonna be okay. You're not gonna be in there for, forever. Like it's gonna be okay. And at the time we didn't know how long I was gonna be in there because nobody was telling me anything. So I was just assuming like, okay, it was gonna be for like a day or so. So I'm just like, okay, okay, okay. So he finally was able to call me down so girl let me tell you about this next situation two officers finally came and got me y'all um they told me to hold my stuff and to walk follow them so i was following them um it's like one officer was in front of me and the other one was behind me or some shit like that i don't know it felt real 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 fucking weird but um yeah that's what i did and then eventually like we were walking towards before we got to the door they had picked up or like got another individual um he was a black guy um that's just how i describe people i like to be detailed so yeah he was a black guy um looked like he was probably about my age you know honestly he had braces just like me um, he was tall, skinny, but he was wearing the same thing I was, minus the fact that he had zip ties on his wrist and I did not. 
Um, so that right there alone kind of like scared the fuck out of me because I'm just like, hold on, bitch. What? Hold on. Why he got these zip ties on him and why am I going in the same direction as he is? Clearly, we need to be in two separate cars. Real weird. So, you know, we got in and the dude started talking to me. And so I was just playing a part because I don't know if he's crazy. I don't know if he got a knife or something. I don't know what he got, even though he got zip ties on. And clearly is the reason why he got these zip ties on. So let me just play the part and answer this nigga and, you know, talk to him. Like, you know, I give a fuck. So he was asking me what my name was. And I told him my name. I asked him what his name. She kind of get the conversation going. I don't really remember exactly how the conversation went. It was real brief because they brought us in the police car. They took us to the police car, I had us sitting in the police car to bring us to the next place, which is like literally around the corner. So that's why I was real brief. But yeah, he was talking to me and stuff. And I was just like the whole time I was cringing because I was like, bro, get me the fuck out of this goddamn police car at that. Because first of all, should be in a motherfucking police car. Second of all, should be in a police car with somebody with zip ties on because like, we ain't like, come on now. So that really scared scared the hell out of me that that did so eventually we got there made it to the place got out the car whew, breath of fucking fresh air um and we walk into the building and the first thing i see is metal detector bitch what metal detector like where where am i am i at the airport am i at the police station like where am i because i thought i was just going to the place that was supposed to help me but i see metal detectors and guards and shit like I'm, I'm, I'm at the penitentiary at this point. I am definitely in the penitentiary because <laughs> because look, the only thing they're missing is the, is the gates, wire gates and stuff because in the middle they have like the little pods, the little recreational area where you can walk around and you know, everybody wearing the same shit. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the guy I was sitting in the car with, he had, he had a lot of outbursts. Okay, y'all, he had tons of outbursts, random outbursts, because it was a time where, like, we weren't talking to each other, and, like, I wasn't answering his questions, and he wasn't asking me any questions. And those quick moments, he was talking to himself. Um, and so I knew, obviously, he he was mentally disturbed. Um, I didn't know what it was, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to judge or anything. But I'm not going to lie and say I wasn't scared. Like, I'm just telling the truth. I, I was motherfucking scared. It is what it is. So, y'all... I'm just like, hell no, hell no, hell no, hell no, hell fucking hell, hell no, like wh where am I? The guy that I rode there with and went the other direction and then the like front desk area lady or whatever told me to sit right next to the metal detector because someone was gonna come and get me to send me to whatever pod I needed to go to. So someone finally came and got me. I walked through the metal detector, of course, um, and then she sent me, like we walked through this long hallway and then she took my vitals um and then told me to like give her all my things including my phone after that point i no longer have my phone because everything that i had in the brown paper bag they put it in like another plastic bag tied it up and then put it in whatever locker that they had and i would get it after my visit is over with so at that point i'm like dog it has happened okay and this place is definitely not given what i thought it didn't give what was supposed to be gave and i was <laughs> I was over it, I was over it. So she sent me to this waiting area where they had other people as well, like coming out, coming in or whatever, cause they were calling them by name. So that was the initial, well, like the real, real waiting area. So I was just in a small room and they had like a bunch of chairs and um, playing TV and stuff. And I think, um, well, Ellen DeGeneres was on, I know this so vividly because it was a traumatizing experience. So I know a lot of details that I shouldn't remember. Um, <laughs> But um, I was just watching it and the whole time I'm just like, oh my God, like, bro. And I was in there for a while. I was in there for a while and that made the anticipation and the anxiety even worse because it's just like, hurry up and do what y'all need to do because I need to go. I need, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go like right now, but I can't. So just hurry up. <laughs> so about two hours passed and somebody finally came, got me and was like, okay, you're gonna be in ward five or ward four, one of the two, I don't remember. Um, she was like, just follow me. So, so immediately whenever I walked in, um, it literally was like jail, so I'm gonna think about it. Like, okay, so you walk in the building or the department or the ward you're gonna be in, and then it's like doors, and then you walk, you gotta walk into some more doors. Like, you gotta walk in like 
you know, just two sets of doors. So you walk in the first set of doors and then it's like the main area is like, it's closed off though with another door. It's like really small, kind of like the front desk area, but the um, area where the receptionists or the nurses and stuff are, it's like protected by glass. And so if you gotta like check in or something or you gotta talk to them, you can talk to them through the glass and they'll just let you in, in the door, which is where you're gonna be sleeping and where you're gonna be you know spending your time okay so as soon as i walk in i immediately see a bunch of people just like scattered around some people are reading books some people are writing some people are doing puzzles some people are watching tv or some people are on the phone they have two, two phones cross across from each other with a, with a um, chair it looked like a, a jail phone y'all look like a pay phone like one of those type of phones so yeah i definitely knew i was in some place kind of like jail <laughs> and so um they walked me to my room um, and so as I'm walking to the room, like I can see some people doors open and stuff like that. And so, um, I see like there's like double beds. So I'm like getting a, like scoping out the area and I'm like, okay, double beds. Okay. I'm gonna be in the room with somebody. Okay. So I was led to my room and, uh, immediately I knew somebody like was in there because they had stuff, but they weren't physically in there yet. So, um, the lady's like, yeah, just, you can just go take your stuff out or whatever on your bed. And, um, that was that i have a little twin size bed it wasn't a bunk bed but it was definitely a twin um no tv in there it had a bathroom right next to it the bathroom didn't have a door it just had like a shower curtain separating the shower and the toilet from the room which is whatever yeah yeah the bathroom were like kind of like hospital bathrooms or hospital showers um it resembled you know that's one thing jill didn't have you know separate bathrooms so you know i can i can give them that you know what i'm saying i can give give, give that to them at least so um also the, the nurse was like uh she told me dinner had already been served at that point because i waited for so long y'all mind y'all it's like they came got me at like 12 something or well it was just afternoon by the time I was able to get to my room. So it was it was late. Um, they had already served dinner. So she was like, do you want any snacks or something? I'm like, yeah, knowing damn well, I'm not hungry because a bitch barely had an appetite to begin with. And then being here definitely didn't increase it. So I was just saying some shit just to get her the fuck out my face. So after she left, I immediately just started falling out crying. Like I, was, I wasn't facing the door, like my back was facing the door and like facing the window because they did have a window in there but you can really see me you can see out of it um but i just immediately started bawling because i'm like oh my god like everything just started settling in i'm just like oh my god i cannot believe this shit like bro what the fuck did i even got myself into i'm just just all over at this point and um as i'm crying i noticed i heard somebody walk in the room so i immediately like tried to play it off for a second but it was my roommate so we're gonna give my roommate we're gonna name her Michaela for this story time purposes um and so she was just like hi um I'm Michaela and so I turned around like oh hi she could tell like I was crying even though I tried to hide it but I really couldn't hide it so um I, would, I just introduced myself I'm like hi um, I'm Adoria and stuff like that and she was just like okay well i'm gonna tell you this like you cannot be crying because if they if you cry they are gonna keep you longer i've been here for three weeks i was supposed to go home on my first week and they keep giving me medication uh, she just started rambling y'all and it wasn't a regular type of ramble either it was kind of like a i don't know you but i'm gonna act like i know you talk to you like i know you type of <laughs> ramble and i'm just like taking it all in like okay okay <laughs> and this is at this point i knew something was wrong with her because well not at this point it's gonna be a next point we won't get there but at this point i kind of thought maybe something could be wrong with her because she was like yeah because they keep trying to give me this shot and i'm not gonna take it they're gonna try to give you things she just was going on and on randomly about how they were gonna shoot her up with some medicine and gonna put her to sleep and just saying how she was been supposed to go home but the doctor keeps keeping her there longer for whatever reason and whenever she told me that, i'm just like oh my god i showed up like hope they ain't gonna play on me like this because if they are then we have a huge problem <laughs> like a huge problem and so i'm just like yo so after she told me that she also started to kind of give me the rundown on the building like how like different people are and shit like that and so 
I was just taking it in or whatever, and after she started, after she stopped talking or whatever, I realized she was still talking. <laughs> I I legit realized she was still talking, but she wasn't talking to me, bitch. She was talking to herself. At that point, that's when I knew, like, yeah, she's definitely mentally disturbed. And I really felt like I didn't fit in because it's like I'm only here for postpartum depression. Like, which is normal. It ain't no, like, hardcore postpartum person. I'm not trying to kill my kids or anything like that. It's just, like, a bitch just be tired. You know what I'm saying? The bitch just be, don't want to eat. Like, that's all. She just was tired a lot. <laughs> and I'm really downplaying it because it really, really, really was a tough situation. But I'm just trying to say, like, my situation had nothing to, like, it, it had nothing on the other people's situation. Like, people was really, really in there for, like, real life shit. So, if anything, I felt like they should have made a different department for people that aren't so far gone in the mental type of thing. But, you know, whatever. It, it, it did help me kind of, like, see how different um, mental issues affect other people. So, that's one thing I will say. I will say I appreciate because I saw a lot of different faces and we're gonna go through these people as well y'all we're gonna go through these different personalities I'm gonna give them names I'm gonna let you know like real life how they are or how they were because I don't think people think I feel like people think mental illness is a joke I feel like people be really thinking people use that as excuse but let me tell y'all it's real it is real and people real life be having issues to where they have to go to places like this to get help because their family can't control them and I was although I don't feel like I necessarily fit in I felt like I needed that situation well I'm just I'm getting ahead of myself I'm getting I'm ahead of myself bitch I just got there so why am I even saying this I just got there anyways we're gonna get there y'all we're gonna get there so after I noticed like she was just talking to her herself and stuff, I really like at that point I knew in my mind, like within myself, like yeah, this girl definitely has some type of issue, definitely. So I'm gonna just kinda like keep my distance but not be not approachable, if that makes sense. <laughs> so um after that I was just like, let me just get the fuck out of this remaining on TV and shit to do, so let me just go in a little recreational area and watch some TV. So I just sat down and watched it. It was cold as fuck in here, by the way. Um, I just sat down and they kind of had the lights dimmed at that point because it was dark. And I think I also made a, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure I called Gabriel from, because they allowed you to talk to anybody. Like you could, you could call as many times as you want, as long as you like not being like bossy and allow other people to make calls too. But um, you can make calls at any point uh, from like six, eight in the morning some shit like that from the time we wake up till 10 30 when they made everybody go to bed so i just stayed up that whole night and we just well not that whole night but i just stayed up until they made everybody go to bed it was just really out the fuck done right before everybody went to bed they did have everybody line up to get their medication like jail okay a lot of things so similar to jail you know what i'm saying but um they gave me like like i was in line so they had like a little cup of water and then a little cup of pills and so i had like three different pills in there i was just like but i did sleep whatever they gave me helped me sleep because i just knew i wasn't gonna be able to sleep like i just oh my gosh but luckily i did sleep um and then we're gonna go into the next day which because I, I i came into the i went into the mental facility i went to the doctor either that Wednesday night going into I mean I went to the hospital that Wednesday night going into Thursday or that Thursday going into no it has to be that Thursday going into Friday yeah it was because I stayed that full day Friday and full day Saturday yeah okay cool I'm, I'm on the right track I'm just double checking um so yeah I was there for a whole weekend y'all I was there from Friday Saturday to Sunday um and so we gonna go through all of of those days because I really want to talk to y'all and like literally explain the different things I went through in that mental facility um because I feel like a lot of people don't know how it is in there so I want to talk to y'all about my experience to hopefully make y'all feel like me and not ever want to fucking go back or y'all if y'all never been ever want to go ever because that's not a place to be if you don't want to go to jail, you don't want to go there. Okay, sweetheart, I'm just going to let you know you don't want to go there if you don't want to go to jail because jail is like there and there is like jail and I ain't gone. <laughs> so I'm going to stop right here. Um, 
I know this video wasn't as long, but I have to break up break up those last two videos because, or I have to break this video up from the last part because I fucking lost the footage and I don't know what the fuck happened to the rest of the footage. So I have to re-record, but I'm glad I have to re-record because now y'all can see my new camera, <laughs> new quality. My husband also finally bought me another ring light because my other ring light was on crack. So thank you, babe. Um, I got a new ring light, and I'm saying next, I really do. I need another backdrop because this backdrop is on its last leg. I don't know if y'all can tell by the quality, but it's on its last leg. Y'all might not be able to see it, but I see it, and it's on its last leg. So we're gonna work on that too. But um, again, I'm stopping right there. I want to thank y'all so much for still tuning into this video. If you are currently watching, that means you currently still fuck with me and I still fuck with y'all. Um, even though y'all be fucking with me like that. But I understand why because like I don't really be fucking with y'all like that. But it's because like I have no time to do anything. But I finally, finally found a team to help me get these videos out. Um, help me edit and stuff like I'm gonna still do my little editing tricks and stuff like that. I'm gonna still do that. But like other things that like need to be done, I have a team to help me with that. That way it's not so much on me because... I started a new job. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that in my update video. So uh, I'm just gonna stop right here. I want to thank you guys so 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 much for sticking with me and for watching once again. Um, and I'm gonna see y'all my next story time. I promise it won't be a long time. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, I promise it's not gonna be long. That's it. I'm not gonna make any other promises that I can't keep. But I'm just gonna say it ain't gonna be long until y'all see me again. <laughs> all right. So I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching, and I'm gonna see y'all next time. Do. You say I'm a dog, and I'm crazy, yeah, maybe true, ooh, ooh.